For the week of January 23rd, 2022, this is Mojo Weekly. I am John. Time to go bye-bye. It's Josh. What's that from? It's from the Muppet Babies, man. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds familiar. I know I've heard it before. But nevertheless, here's your news, Josh. Uh, Nothing really big happened this week. You know, it was pretty light. You know, pretty, pretty quiet week. Um, oh, wait, Microsoft spent $70 billion, $70 billion. The B word, the B 70 word. bills. Uh, they're not fucking around, yeah. man. They're just not fucking around. Uh, if, if we thought they were fucking around with Bethesda, uh, they spent 10 times that on Activision. Uh, That's crazy. Week. It is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um, they they spent seventy billion dollars, which was apparently a bargain brought on by uh, Acti- Activision's fuckery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, uh, they announced it on Tuesday. They intend to acquire Activision Blizzard, uh, and Phil hmm. Spencer from Xbox will serve as the CEO of Microsoft Gaming and will oversee Activision Blizzard once it is finalized. Now. Josh, it will not be hmm. finalized until uh, they expect to have it all figured out, all the regulatory approvals and uh, the customary closing conditions. Uh, in uh, at the end of June of 2023. Damn, so it's going to be a while yet. I mean, it's going to be a bit. Yeah, yeah. Seventy billion dollars doesn't spend instantly. You know, it's not like you just. Swipe, yeah, I guess that's true. It's not like you swipe your credit card and the transaction's done. You know, <laughs> sweep. Yeah, that wasn't uh, Activision. Those were those fuckers that made River Raid on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now Microsoft owns River Raid. Mm-hmm. My God, I. And, and and the fact is that it's going to take over a year for this transaction to be complete. Uh, yeah. I would assume there's a lot of news and a lot of news bites and a lot of theories and a lot of rumors that are out there on what exactly this is going to be. But I would assume this just beefs up uh, Microsoft's silly ass little rental thing they got going on with that uh, <laughs> Xbox Ultimate, whatever the fuck it's called for 15 bucks a month. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's just their silly little rental. I love it. Yes, it is. Game. You're paying. You're paying for air. You you own nothing. You own enjoy nothing. the games while you have them. Yeah. Enjoy them while you have them. I, I enjoy games too. I love Lincoln Video and, and Microsoft are now button heads to head near. But who's got the shittiest rental company? Yeah, Wally Touche is uh, is uh, competing with Microsoft. <laughs> These are just jokes that only you and I understand. By the way. <laughs> I, I, um, the fact that we mentioned Wally Touche on this podcast makes my entire fucking life complete. Cause I never thought this would be coming ever. Well, let's, 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 uh, segue a minute. Let's, 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 uh, oh, take a, sure. let's do a sidebar for everybody who is listening. Uh, because you and I are the only people who know what the fuck we're talking about. Uh, Wally Touche was a guy who owned a, uh, a rental store in our hometown of Merrill, Wisconsin, and it was called Golden Wave Video. And Wally Touche was a big man, big, big man. Big. Uh, Is a big man. He's still around, isn't he? He's still alive. I think he passed. I think he may have passed. (laughs) I don't even know. But uh, he rode around town on his little little scooter. On uh, what, what, you know, the, the little Walmart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he rode yeah. around on that with a fucking, he's a big dude, and he had a parrot on his shoulder. Big-ass parrot on his shoulder, yeah. Yeah, and always parrot shit down, running down his back. Um, but if you Classic. Wanted to, if you wanted to rent Nintendo games, you had to go visit Wally and his mom. You had to. Uh, because Wally and his mom would rent you the Nintendo games and all the porn you could ever ask for. On porn VHS. and NES, man. Yeah, they had it all. They uh, had it all. My my sister lived a block away from Golden Way, so I have many a memory of yeah. going there and renting NES games while uh, yeah. they would go and grab a couple adult films for themselves. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I went there with my friend Kevin, and his dad took us there uh, one weekend, and we rented a pile of NES games, and we rented a VHS called Foxy Food Fighting. What? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, wait, as adults or as kids? As kids. We were like in middle school. And his, <laughs> That's his, amazing. His dad sat and uh, watched us or watched with us uh, uh, hot chicks in a wrestling ring filled with like pudding and cake. And... 
<laughs> that's amazing. Foxy food fighting. Yeah, we rented that. Oh, anyway, shit. That's let's, amazing. Let's get back to the news. So <laughs> you mentioned Game Pass and Wally, and that's how we got on here. I, I mentioned Wally, but, you know, Lincoln Video, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a blog post about the acquisition, uh, Phil Spencer, uh, the aforementioned uh, head of Microsoft Gaming, said that Microsoft will offer as many Activision Blizzard games as we can within Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass, both new titles and games from Activision Blizzard's incredible catalog. Now, yep. Josh. River uh, Raid. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pitfall's coming. The, the OG Pitfall. Um, Hell yeah. We were, uh, you know, as is the case with all these news stories and anything that happens, like, fandom goes nuts and they start speculating and all of a sudden everybody is a uh, an armchair billionaire ceo right right and they know exactly what's happening uh so immediately the speculation went to oh shit what's this going to mean for sony right because um you know uh, call of duty last year was the highest selling third party game on playstation right um yep so does this mean call of duty's gone you know um, for, nah. for PlayStation starting in, you know, whatever it is, June, 2023, I don't know. So, uh, according to Phil Spencer, he said that Microsoft will honor all existing agreements with Sony upon its proposed Activision or acquisition of Activision Blizzard, as well as it's, I did hear about that. Yeah. As well as its desire to keep call of duty on PlayStation. So who knows what that means? I mean, I would, I, um, go ahead. Microsoft owns a lot of of IPs that are across yeah. every single console. I mean, it isn't just Xbox systems. I mean, yeah. I'd be I'd be very surprised if Bethesda and Activision and Blizzard and all this stuff if they went exclusive to Xbox. I think that could really wind up biting them in the ass if they went to that direction. Yeah. I would imagine not much will change. The only thing that I think will change is that you might get a little bit of extra shit on the Xbox consoles. But yeah, maybe. Um you know, my, my <clears throat> prediction, I mean, and I am probably wrong, but my prediction is we'll see uh, Call of Duty appear on Game Pass, and then we'll also see it appear on a PlayStation console for purchase, right? Um, yeah. And, and again, I, I know nothing. I'm just speculating. Um, it makes sense if they want to step on Sony's neck and be like, fuck you, we're keeping it here. And fuck, and by the way, fuck uh, 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 the customers. You know, because uh, Sony does have the uh, highest selling console out there right now. Uh, right. So fuck all those customers. If they want to play Call of Duty, they're going to have to buy an Xbox. They could do that. And it's, you know, they paid $70 for the right to do that. So, uh, yeah. But on the other hand, um, Sony currently, uh, as I understand it, uh, has sold 50% more consoles this generation than Microsoft has. So it might not be the best idea to cut those, those customers. Off. No, you know what I'm saying? But whatever, uh, either way, I don't care. Cause I don't play call of duty. Don't give a shit. Um, yeah, no, so, same. Um, same. I, I'd be surprised if, if it went exclusive Xbox, I think that'd be the, the one route that I would be actually, that'd blow my mind if they decided to do that. Yeah. But I've been I, reading a lot about this, this whole transaction, the transaction, this whole entire business deal and everything. And a lot of people are saying that Microsoft is, is, is brilliant because they're basically playing for the long term. The whole concept that by the next generation of consoles, say in 2026, 2027, yeah. you're not going to be buying a physical console. You're going to be buying a service. And yeah. like when those things launch with a new, um, you know, uh, Skyrim, I don't want to say Skyrim. What, what's it's called? Elder uh, Scrolls. Oh, Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Elder Scrolls and Call of Duty and a World of Warcraft and, you know, whatever that shit is. Um, you're going to be playing it on a tablet, on a, on a computer, probably on a phone and maybe a, a TV box type deal. Or you just like install, you know, you're not going to be going like, hey, I'll bring my Xbox over. It's like, hey, let's open up the Xbox app on your on your TV and let's play some Xbox. I got an account. I yeah. have this game. I have this game. We'll just open them up because it's all going to be stored on the cloud. Yeah. And so like the plan isn't like, wow, we're going to get Call of Duty is and Elder Scrolls shit on the Xbox Series X. It's long term. Like right now, Microsoft has what could be almost comparable to a Nintendo lineup of exclusives. That could be, you know, for, for years down the road. Whereas Sony is like, Sony, shit, what, God of War? I mean, what do we got? Like, for real, like, 
what? I mean, Demon Souls. I mean, there's there's a couple big big games out there, of course, and Sony's got a lot of brilliant IPs. But this is this is this is game changing, especially for Xbox, who is, as far as I can tell, has yet to ever beat a Sony console in sales. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know how the 360 PS3 era, uh, era went, but. Um, I, I think for I, most of it, the 360 was ahead, but PS3 pulled ahead towards the end, especially with the Blu-ray support. Yeah, maybe. Um, either way, um, it, it's it's a big fucking move, and uh, so I felt like we kind of had to talk about it, even though every literally every <clears throat> fucking gaming podcast is probably uh, talking about it and saying uh, the same we, kind of uneducated nonsense that we're saying. Yeah, and we are. We're the most uneduc- un- uneducated of them all, but we sprinkled in Wally Touche, so therefore... Touché. I dare anyone out there to find a motherfucking podcast that mentioned Wally Touche with the Microsoft acquisition. I mean, come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. It's come our, on, John. It's our unique central Wisconsin uh, spin <laughs> that we're able to put on it. All right. Moving we're number on. one with fans that also read the photo news. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, do you remember the Merrill Courier? If so, where are your podcast? I do. <laughs> we're, we're your podcast. The Merrill Leader. Yeah. All right, so moving along, we have talked about uh, the shoot 'em up Soul Cresta that's coming out. We've talked about that a number of times because we mm-hmm. like the niche on this podcast. We like the niche. Uh, Soul mm-hmm. Cresta, as you know, Josh, has been delayed a number of times by Platinum Games. However, um, mm. we now have a definitive launch date: two two twenty two. Oh my! For Atlanta. the P- PS4, Switch, and Steam. Uh, and it's coming for forty bucks, man, for a for a shmup. They're they're going they're going balls deep. We're 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 paying forty bucks. Um, so if you don't remember what Soul Cresta is, folks at home, because I know Josh has this <laughs> memorized. Uh, Soul Cresta is a neo classic shooter in which you pilot the cutting edge docking fighter Yamato and initiate Operation Soul Cresta to take back the solar system from the evil Mega Zohar army. <laughs> so the Yamato, it, it gets all fucking, uh, you know, what's the what's the old cartoon where they the the all the ships come together? Fuck. Uh, Roadrunner. That's the one. Uh, mm-hmm. The robot ships, man, you know. Transfer, uh, no, uh, Voltron. Voltron. This fucking ship Voltrons together three smaller ships, and by docking and splitting these ships in a variety of ways, you can adapt to a variety of enemies and situations. So uh, I'll be buying it right away. Um, this is going to be a good one just in time for Shm Appreciation Month, which we will be talking about shortly. Yep. Uh, next up, Josh. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is coming to Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack subscription service in February. It will be nice. the 12th Nintendo 64 game for Nintendo's premium tier. I say that huh. with fucking hard sarcastic quotes, premium <laughs> tier. Uh, following this It'll be week, worth it eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eventually. Uh, following this past week's release of Banjo-Kazooie. So... That is what's coming. So if you want to play some fucking Majora's Mask, you just got to wait till next month as Nintendo drip feeds this shit to subscribers. Yeah. I got uh, lukewarm feelings for, for Majora's Mask. It's not one of my favorites. Yeah, I love the concept. I've never finished it. Every time I start it, I get about three quarters of the way through it. And then I'm like, ah, I'm good. And What about the Majora's Mask for the 3DS with the 3D yep, possibilities that you're talking about? Yep, same. Like yeah, every iteration. That's, that's good though. Like yeah. that that version really like um, it woke me up to the idea of maybe playing through it someday. And I don't have a 3ds, and I don't even have Majora's Mask 3D. But there's no way in hell I can go back to the N64 no. version. No. Not not no way. There's there's like three games I can go back to on the N64. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and then finally, Netflix has announced that the Cuphead show which is the animated mm-hmm. series based on the game Cuphead, will debut yep. on February 18th. Uh, they released the first full trailer for the series in a batch of images. Uh, it is released as 12 episodes running at about 12 minutes apiece. So a little short. So awesome. Um, it is, yeah. uh, so, you know, it's, it's following Cuphead and his brother Mugman on a carnival-themed adventure through the Inkwell Isles, and the journey will bring them face-to-face with, of course, the devil himself. Looks good. Yep. 
It does look good. The trailer looks fun. Yep. It reminds me a little bit of, uh, it's got that classic Disney look to it, of course, but it reminds me of something slightly edgier, like uh, perhaps a Roger Rabbit cartoon. Oh, I like Roger Rabbit. I love me some Roger Rabbit. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. That's it for our news. Here we go. It's time for the new releases. And yes, there might be stuff <laughs> here we want to play this week. Let's find out. I El, he it. El Hijo, a Wild West tale, is out on mobile phones. So, Why are we even mentioning that? Crickets. <laughs> Why? Uh, the Artful Escape, which is a big hit and people seem to love it, coming out for the there... PlayStation <laughs> and Switch. Hmm, that sounds cool. But there, there are like hundreds of new cell phone games that come out every week. Are we really? Oh, yeah. This, we're, we're scraping the barrel now? We're going to talk about games that are coming out on mobile? I mean, we've been doing it since time began. No, and we by, haven't. And by you're, that, I mean you're so for full the of past, it. like, I don't know, 18 months. Or something nah. Like that. Nah. Yeah, I, mean, right I, don't, All right. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I've never once heard you say Angry Birds Part 7, the crossover with Fast and the Furious, is coming out on mobile tomorrow. That's going to have to grab that, that one. That game does not exist. <laughs> but right. it should. And you know it should. Fa Fast 10, your seatbelts is coming. <laughs> what? Uh, Circuit Superstars coming out for PS4. This looks fun. It's a it's like a little racing game starring, you know, a little, little circuit car, you know, burp, 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 whatever. Anyway, yeah. looks all right. Uh, Damon X Machina is getting a second life, a second shot on the PC. This was the Switch exclusive. Um, mm. And uh, it was. Oh, I played, yeah, I remember I played that the one. Demo. Yeah, I played the, I played, I think, the first two demos they put out. It was fun, but uh, kind of fun, I guess. Fun in quotes. It was interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was better on the Amiga. <laughs> hmm. uh, and then uh, here's the big release of the week. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus for the Switch. Uh, yeah. This is like Pokemon <clears throat> in ancient times looking a bit Breath of the Wild-ish, only shittier. Yeah. Really? I think I've, I've heard. Pe the, people are excited. Yeah, people are excited because it's Pokemon and, and mm -hmm. I, you know, it's just their default their default state when you mention Pokemon is right. But uh, uh, that's the same sound you made when uh, Pokemon snap came out. So is. don't even. Yeah. Um, but man, the game graphically, Jesus, it looks like shit. Um, hmm. But anyway, that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Could be. Uh, and then finally, uh, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection for PS5 and PC. So you can get all your Uncharted's in one next gen package really so are those enhanced at all because it was the nathan drake collection of of uncharted one through four wasn't it one no it was one two and three and then uncharted four so i have the one two and three and then then part four on the on the ps4 which worked gloriously on the ps5 so i'm curious are these even more enhanced are they even prettier because there's that also the side the side mission too with the the, the other side main character the ladies what was that one that was Chloe and, yeah. Chloe and what's her nuts? Uh, I forget. Yeah. But uh, I think that was the uh, that was the uh, Uncharted uh, Beach Volleyball Edition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is fifty <clears throat> bucks. Uh, it includes uh, Uncharted Four and Uncharted Lost Legacy uh, remastered hmm. for the PS5. So it's only got two games on it, and it's the two PS4 oh. games. The two PS4 oh. games remastered, uh, and like I said, uh, fifty bucks. 50 yeah, bucks interesting. Okay, well, yeah, both great games. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, I think I got Uncharted Four for literally five dollars, though. So I think I'm just gonna enjoy what I got. Yeah, it's a great game, and probably it is. still still looks lovely on the PS4. So, Josh, with mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. it is time for Dale and his retro recap. Hey, hey, Mojo Weekly listeners, this is Dale, and welcome back to this week's recap of the latest retro re-releases, remasters, and remakes. As always, credit for this goes to GSK from RetroNOS.com, LimitedRunGames.com, StrictlyLimitedGames.com, and more. Let's get to it. Landing physically this week is two authorized reissues from Limited Run Games. First is the Nintendo platformer cult classic, A Boy and His Blob, for $60 and $90 for the Standard and Collector's Editions, respectively. Of course, this is the 
classic platformer where you use jelly beans for special power-ups to maneuver your way around levels and led to more popular remakes for the Wii and later consoles. The lesser-known Game Boy follow-up, The Rescue of Princess Blubette for the Game Boy, is also landing for pre-order this week via Limited Run Games for $40 and $80 for their standard and collector's editions. And the collector's editions for both games include foil boxes, soundtracks, and more, so get on it. Hitting digitally this week, we'll start off with the Arcade Archive selection of Hopping Mappy. I never heard of it before, but it's now out, and it's also this week's background music. It first hit arcades from Namco in 1986, and it's just like regular Mappy, but now on a pogo stick, and being able to hop in all directions to snap up all the pickups while avoiding those pesky adversaries. The G-Mode archives this week, Don Maku, Kentai, Shikin, Daiyou, Yohin, already hit Switch in Japan several months ago, and now this Japanese mobile port of the awesome Cave Shmup series is a training game from a 2006 Japanese mobile port and is now available worldwide on Steam for five dollars. For Switch owners with the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass, Rare's Banjo-Tooie has just been added to the N64 channel and this classic Rare platformer is also available on the Xbox Game Pass subscribers via being part of the Rare Replay collection. A special fiscal release from Strictly Limited Games is out for pre-orders now with a Taito Ergert 2 mini tabletop arcade unit with bundles that include extra controllers and other goodies ranging from $230 to $500. This piece of hardware has 40 pre-installed Taito games such as Space Invaders, Bubble Bobble, Lunar Rescue, Darius Gaiden, and also advertises having an SD card slot to add your own. It has a cool, slick, rotating monitor for preferred horizontal and vertical play, preferably for shmups. Uh, hey, it also has a trackball too. The final noteworthy release this week is another limited run game selection, which is their own channel of Toe Jam and Earl 30th Anniversary merchandise. So head over there to get the jump on apparel like hats and hoodies and to other goodies like trading cards and even branded skate decks. It's all there on LimitedRunGames.com. And that wraps it up for this week's Retro Recap. Check out the MojoMenace.com forum listing for this week's releases for more notes and links. We'll send it back to John and Josh. All right, so that's Dale with the retro recap. Man, five hundred bucks? Would you pay five hundred bucks for like a mini thing like that? Holy shit! Absolutely. What the mm. hell does it come with? Yeah. Jeez. <clears throat> That's crazy. It's crazy, Dale. You're selling us some crazy shit, Dale. Uh, speaking of crazy shit, uh, this past week, Banjo-Kazooie came out on the Nintendo Online Expansion Pack service. Uh, and so I decided, you know what? What the hell? I'm going to go try to play this. I haven't played this game in probably 20 years. Um, and uh, uh, Josh, uh, I'm going to let you uh, one, one of our... Go ahead, <laughs> One of our good buddies um, back from the old forum days, Blue BMW, yeah. uh, his 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 favorite game of all time is Banjo-Kazooie, and I cannot fucking understand why. Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I tried to play it. <laughs> I'll just let that sit there. I tried to play it. Um, mm. it's, it's not unplayable, but the biggest problem it has on the Switch is Nintendo's lazy-ass motherfucking bullshit where they will not allow you to uh, customize your controller, right? Customize mm, yeah. the buttons. Because as you remember, Josh, being a guy who lived through this shit in 1998 or whatever it was, that controller was insane, right? So did you try to play it on the N64? Or are you trying to play it on I'm the Switch it on or the something? Switch, on the Switch. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. In portable okay. mode. And as, uh, mm. for example, I can't imagine. Here, so they won't let you customize the button layout, right? Just because Nintendo's like, fuck it, here's a ROM, have fun, right? Yeah, right, and, yeah, and, basically. And oftentimes they're like, here's a shittily emulated ROM, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's bad, yeah. <laughs> but so they throw out the ROM, basically, and they're like, good luck. So when you're playing it, you know, and you're going through the freaking innumerable 
tutorials that you have to sit through to actually get to the game. You know, you got to mm-hmm. go to bottles, the mole, and he fucking makes you, <laughs> makes you go sit through all his tutorials on how to do even the most basic shit, like look around. Right. Um, he, he will say things like, um, you know, push the Z button. Oh boy. This. And you owning a switch are like, where's there's no Z button here. What Jesus. am I supposed to do? So you're like, okay, I guess I'll move this. Oh, this must be the Z button. There you go. Okay, I got it. Because they're too goddamn mm-hmm. lazy to just pallet swap that shit and be like, right. you know, anytime they mention the Z button, throw in ZR or whatever. So whatever. You, you get used to that. But then you finally, as they as they drip feed you the different um, abilities that you should just have right from the get-go, um, as, as you get these abilities, you get the one that has Kazooie take over the running and she's like and it's like it's like the speed run right and then to do that josh Mm. and while you're doing that to run you have to like take your another finger and like twister it over to jump because the jump button doesn't make sense with this button low out loadout so you're just you got to play the finger twister to make it happen and it's fun like so as 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 hard as it is to go back to an N64 game in general, um, mm-hmm. imagine going back to it just with a controller that makes no sense for it, right? And and we talked about this uh, a couple months ago when the expansion pack thing first came online, and I was talking about how Sin and Punishment uh, plays like mm. shit on this thing because the controller doesn't work. And if you want to play it right, you got to order Nintendo's $50 N64 controller. But um, anyway, that. so that aside... Let's talk about the game itself. So, Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, let's. You're excited, right? You're thrilled. Um, mm. This came after Mario 64, and in that area, or in that era, when um, all the game studios were like, "Well, Mario 64 is pretty dope. Let's try to emulate yeah. that. Let's try to copy that." Um, and <coughs> nobody did that uh, more prolifically than Rare. You know, uh, they were just like, hey, every game from now on is a fucking Mario 64 clone, only not as good. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, So uh, it's it's very much an early 3D platformer um, with the big mascot characters, big cartoony characters that look like fucking rejects from some uh, now defunct animation studio. And um, (laughs) with a lot of really like very specifically British humor, right? Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and a lot of like just corny jokes that don't land, especially whatever it is now, fucking 25 years later. Um, the game itself is a collectathon, you know? Um, it's uh, bad. It, it is with the collecting. It yeah, it is. Um, and it, it's not even the worst of the rare games. Wait till we get to <laughs> Donkey Kong 64, which is just a goddamn nightmare. Oh, please uh, tell me we're reviewing that next week. <laughs> no, no, I, we will never. That's the rare that. month spotlight. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's it's rare appreciation month. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, if we could do Jet Force Gemini and Conkers and uh, yeah. Star Fox or Dinosaur Planet, whatever you want to call it, I, I'd be okay with that. All that. Shit. Yeah, I, gra- I don't hate <laughs> grab by the ghoulies. It's not great though. Um, so anyway, it's a very much a collectathon, and every time you pick up a little item. Uh, that little item will talk to you and say, hi, I'm a Jiggy, and here's what I do. I, you want to collect mm-hmm. five of me in order to get this. And you're like, fucking great. Okay, whatever. And then and then you grab a music note. And it's like, hi, I'm a music note, and you want to grab a hundred of me in every level, and then I'll do this. <laughs> and, and and then you, oh, you grab a little skull, and it's like, hi, I'm a skull, and I, you want to grab like five of me. So anyway, it goes on. <sighs> It, get, it, go, it goes on and on and on. And you're like, how many of these goddamn things do I have to collect? Right. Yeah, right. And uh, the the game is very, and I use this word um, hesitantly because I'm, I'm not one of those guys who's like, I need a mature game. But it is very, <laughs> it is very like Fisher Price um, yeah. level of storytelling and, um, and quality. Um, but... That said, there's there's just something it's got and it's got to be all nostalgia because I played this when it first come, came out and I enjoyed it when it first came out to a degree. Weird. 
Um, yeah, yeah, it is weird. And 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 after I played this one, I was looking forward to Banjo Tooie. Like I was super pumped. I was like, all right, I'll do yep. it again. And then Banjo Tooie came out, and it was like this game only like twice as big. And I was like, dope, fucking Banjo Tooie, let's get nuts. Um, but mm-hmm. man, you and I have talked about this a bunch. N sixty four games just simply do not hold up anymore. They're hard to play. No, no, and it's it's it, it is it's true. It's it's the it's it's the big chunky polygons. It's the um, the the, uh, the they put the fog effect over everything. Mm. So they the, so they, that fucking controller, yeah, <laughs> yeah that fucking controller, like all of it. Mm. Um, and and again, the only way to play this game with any sort of success or half ass enjoyment is if you have that fucked up controller. Um, it is no fun on a Switch controller. It is no fun portably for sure i couldn't going. imagine it yeah yeah as you're trying to figure out like which button translate to the c up stick or c up button or the c down button like, just terrible you mean? you mean for this one i have to push up on the r stick but for the other c down i gotta push y like what the fuck is going on even right yeah um it's a it's a it's a mess it's an absolute <sighs> mess just put this on the Nintendo Switch and try to figure out where you're going to put... Uh, let's have four buttons all labeled C. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Um, and, <sighs> and you know what? They could solve a lot of this by just letting players customize the button setup. Right. You know, just yeah. like, just go like to a any... Menu. Yep. Go to a menu <laughs> like any... and say... Yeah, like any other game. Any any other emulator? I mean, like, think of this. This is like emulators have been out for fifteen years that are doing Super Nintendo, NES, Genesis, N sixty four, whatever. It's just like, oh, hold on, let me put in my 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 appropriate buttons. Okay, I'm ready to go. Let's go. We're yep. we're gonna fight now. Yep. Done. Like, I've it's got, so easy. I've got Open Mu on my Mac that I could uh, easily yep. emulate N sixty four games if I wanted to fucking torture myself. And mm. uh, if I did, I could uh, customize the button layout. You know. Yep. <laughs> And make it make sense, but uh, I love yeah, Nintendo. Crazy. But God damn, are they lazy with this stuff? They are so lazy. They are. They so, really are. Anyway. They like to cater to those kids, I guess, that just don't care about those kind of things. I and one so. one thing to note too, who, too about Banjo Kazooie. Um, Banjo Kazooie is owned by Microsoft. Yes. Yep. And it's on a Nintendo system. Oh, how does that work? Oh, weird. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, this this is a good point. It leads uh, it leads. It's been leading a lot of people to believe that we will see Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo uh, expansion mm. uh, thing, which I think is cool. I still like Diddy Kong Racing. That's a fun one, even though the characters are rare, generic bullshit. Uh, the game is yeah. so fun. I'd still love to see like a world based racer like that. It, the last Crash yeah. game kind of had that, and I dug that a lot about it. Um, so, uh, I would, I would love to see Diddy Kong racing appear on yeah. Nintendo's online service, but they, hell, they should do a new one on the switch. I mean, come yeah, on. Right. Right. It's the about next, time for one. I want to see the next Mario Kart and get into that shit. That would be awesome. But anyway, we've had enough Mario here. Kart. Let's get a Diddy Kong racing. Come yeah, on. I, I come on. Give, give us some more Diddy Kong racing. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right, Josh, that's, that's enough of me bitching about that. It is time for the last question. All right, Josh, uh, the best Activision property, your favorite Activision <laughs> property. The, the, uh, the one that will River, make you- River Raid. River Raid. <laughs> really? I'm so fucking excited about River Raid. Activision, what the fuck? I don't know. Um, God, uh, Activision let, let me really was, the question. was- Let me rephrase the question. Like, More like, what Activision property should Microsoft be bringing back to life? How about that? Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so Activision, um, they they did they, during my favorite era of gaming, the NES and and sixty or sorry, sixteen bit, eight bit era. You know, whatever. Activision was kind of non existent. I wouldn't say they disappeared entirely, but they didn't get huge again until like this PlayStation era with the thirty two bit into the you know the yeah. PS two era. So like, God, I don't really give a shit. Like, uh, I, I, okay. Pitfall would be cool. It'd be nice to have a new Pitfall, but it'll suck, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Activision. What What do they got? What What else is? I don't know. Oh, Blizzard. Right. That'd be. Hey, 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 Blizzard. Okay. Fuck faces. Microsoft. Well, give us a new Lost Vikings. Boom. There it is. All right. Fair enough. 
Give us um, a new Lost Vikings. Maybe a rock and roll racing sequel. Uh, <laughs> uh, huh? here, here's one that I, I'm going to throw out there. Uh, this is, I don't know if this is considered an Activision property. Probably not. They published it, right? Um, it was actually made by Lionhead Studios, which, you know, as you know, mm. is uh, fucking what's his nuts. Uh, Peter Molyneux, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The world's second biggest huckster. Um, but uh, they published a game for Lionhead called The Movies. Hmm. And the movies was uh, like a sim type game, like The Sims, uh, where you mm -hmm. take control of a movie studio and you have to get movies made. You have to hire people. You have to have the studio like, you know, you do everything you got, like craft services, the whole shit. And it goes sure. through like the silent movie era uh, in the talkies into like the uh, golden age of cinema up to current time. And it's great. I loved it. I loved that game uh, because I'm a big like movie buff. I would love sure. to see the movies come back. That was a fun nice. game. Uh, I don't know. Again, I don't know that it's an Activision property, but it is one that they uh, published. They, hmm. you know, they they don't have a lot of properties that they like. Like it's just such generic shit for the most part, you know. And it really is. Yeah, I mean, like, Call of Duty, and I guess okay, so Blizzard that'd be World of Warcraft, the Warcraft series, Starcraft. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. But, uh, I, you know, outside of Blizzard, um, it's like, I mean, what do we want to see a remake of Kaboom? Mm, give know? us more Kaboom. Oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I'd Chop, be okay with Kaboom. Chopper Command. Didn't Activision, they, they worked with what Red Octane and Harmonix to do the Guitar Hero games for a little while. I yeah, mean, they published those. Yep. They fucking bit. ruined the, the, the Guitar Hero Live yeah. or whatever that came out on the PS4. Four and Xbox One were fucking terrible games. Yeah, they made um, the shit out of that franchise. They did, but it'd be, I mean, it's a new generation. There are no guitar games on this new console era yet, so... Uh, give us our plastic hey, guitars. Yeah, I, I enjoy Rock Band. Rock Band's fun. Yeah. Sure. All right, well, that's it for us. Uh, in the meantime, until next week, you can find us at mojomenace.com where we have uh, forums, a Discord chat, and our merch store. You can find links to all that stuff on the main page. Our YouTube mm -hmm. is Mojo Menace. Our Twitch is Mojo Menace. All the social medias is Mojo Menace except Facebook because guess what? I blew up the fucking account tonight because I'm like, what is the point of this? It's fucking stupid. Really? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. done with Facebook. I haven't posted our episodes on there for about three months now, and I'm just like, I'm never doing it again because that place is a goddamn wow. cesspool. Uh, so everywhere else you can find us at Mojo Menace. Josh, where can they find you? Oh my gosh. If you want to continue the conversation with me about Guitar Hero and plastic toy guitars and guitar things like that and plastic drums and other things that are like guitars but plastic, you can always follow me on Twitter at underscore Joshua Turbo. Don't forget the underscore as it is the most important underscore in all the internet and plastic guitars. And plastic guitars. That's it for us. Next week we'll talk more about Appreciation Month, but until then, bye bye. Bye. Eat the tacos, come eat them up. Eat the tacos, come.